I was born into an Air Force family, so I've never not been part of the Air Force until I retired a couple of years ago. Uh, so I'm feeling a little bit like I'm living in a world without a life preserver anymore. Um, my dad was an Air Force officer for 35 years. He was a fighter pilot. Uh, great guy, great dad, great father, great everything. It was a great, great childhood, actually. A wonderful family, and you know, uh, we lived in great places. We had great friends. It, it was an exciting way to grow up as a young guy. There was never any pressure at all for, from my father about me going into military service. He wanted me to do what made me happy. I always wanted to do what Dad did. I wanted to be him. Um, flying airplanes excited me. Um, I had the chance in those days to spend time on the flight line with him at all the bases we were assigned to. I knew all his crew chiefs. I actually wanted to be a crew chief growing up. I thought that would be a great thing to do. And the best thing that ever happened for the United States Air Force is that they wouldn't let me be a crew chief because I can't fix anything. But I always wanted to be my dad. And the chance to fly airplanes uh, was a, a big draw for me. It was a pretty exciting thought. It wasn't about career plans. It was about, man, I'd love to go fast. I was probably just much more confident than I was intelligent <laughs> or hardworking in high school. And so my high school grades were not that good. Uh, and, and I applied to the academy, I went through the, uh, the, the, pro the nomination process, but I, I was pretty confident I wasn't going to make the cut. And in fact, I was right. Um, but somewhere along the way, my dad heard about this, pro this thing called the Falcon Foundation Scholarship, and I applied to that. The Falcon Foundation gave me a second chance, one that I probably hadn't earned because I just wasn't mature enough to work hard for it at that point in time. But it opened the door for, to a life that I just couldn't even have imagined at the time. I remember basic cadet training. I remember the assault course. I, I remember the Siri compound, uh, you know, and training, resistance training. The most significant memory I have of my entire time at the academy is at the end of that training, when you were sitting almost, you know, delirious under a hood on a, you know, two-legged stool. Somebody ripped off your hood, and you were looking at a fence with the American flag on it. I still get emotional thinking about that. That was a shared experience that, uh, unlike any I'd had in my lifetime. Uh, again, I was, I was not a great student at the academy, and it, and it was my fault. It wasn't because I couldn't have been one. I just I focused on other things. And as a result, I, I blocked myself off from opportunities down the road, which is something I've told every cadet I ever ran into and every young officer I knew. Um, all you do by not applying yourself fully early in life or early in your career is limit options for yourself later. I, I limited options for myself and made the road a little harder than it needed to be. Uh, but I enjoyed the academics. I just didn't apply myself the way I should have. Uh, I was blessed at the academy because of the people I was with in the squadron, especially my classmates. I, I saw these people who I really admired. I, I kind of wanted to be like them because they were, they were just better than I was at so many things. Um, and I changed who I was, how I thought, the way I approached life because of the example they set. I love the academy. I, I love what it stands for. I love what it stood for then. I love what it did for me. Um, I, I love what it represents. So the Academy to me was a really, really positive thing. Yeah, there were frustrating days like everybody else, but, but overall, I, I, I think I kept, most of the time, I, I kept focus on, this is a pretty good deal. My uh, opportunities I had in the Air Force from there forward were just unbelievable to me. Um, I flew the T-37 as an instructor pilot after I came out of pilot training. Not something I wanted to do. I didn't ask to do that. I had, you know, big, grander plans. Uh, but as it turned out, there, there couldn't have been anything better for me. Becoming a, a good instructor is really important to being a good officer and leader in my mind. Uh, it's the same skill set in many cases. And, and as a young instructor, you can kind of shape yourself and shape the way you deal with people in so many different ways. How you communicate, how you relate, how you empathize, where you draw lines, how, how you set standards. Um, that was all just a wonderful training for me. I, I actually met my wife through my academy roommate, John Bosper. Um, I went to his wedding after graduation and that's where I met Betty. So I now had Betty by my side and, and we were in Europe and, and traveling and we were starting a family and life was busy and hectic just like all married, young married couples' lives are and it was a rush. Um, from there I went into the A-10 which was um, an airplane I'd always dreamed about flying. Uh, it was a phenomenal mission. And then after that I switched to the F-16 and uh, the F-16 was different than the A-10 but equally as exciting and just as much fun. Um, so it, it, my flying career was just fantastic. Uh, every, every time I turned around somebody gave me an opportunity that surprised me and uh, it, it's, it was a joy. I went back to the academy and worked as an air officer commanding which is a job I didn't ask for by the way. In fact when I got it I got a call saying that 
I was going to the Air Force Academy to be an AOC, and I said, no, no I'm not. I'm going to either Alcamere or I'm going to Gooderslow. So I complained the whole way until I got there. And, and then I ended up loving my time at the Academy. But it's funny, you see the Academy from different angles. You start to see the opportunity it gave you. You start to and reflect a little bit on what it did for you. Um, and you, you got to see the quality of the young men and women who were coming in the door, who were more qualified than we were. So I've always enjoyed being around the Academy. My time as an AOC was really a lot of fun. Um, and I came back to the Academy later as a commandant, which was a surprise um, and, a, and a, an, again, a joy. My views of the Academy have been different each time. Uh, they've always been positive. I, I always have uh, different expectations when I went back. But what I loved about the Academy wasn't just what it stood for, or just what it meant for me, but what it could be for the Air Force and for the nation. And I think that goal is still out in front of us, which is one of the exciting things about the Air Force Academy. I was honored, number one. It, it's hard not to be honored when somebody asks you to take a job that represents a service. Um, I was intimidated a little bit by that, um, and I was excited about the challenge. Um, so it, it, that was a, just a tremendous honor. When I first came into the job, it was clear to me that the number one concern was airmen and their motivation to remain airmen. You know, my first couple years in the job, we had multiple hearings on sexual assault, on readiness, on sequestration and the budget control. Like, that's where the focus was. Uh, and then when I was not doing those things, I felt that the focus had to be on airman morale. Uh, let's maintain the pride. Let's not quit on each other. Let, let's, let's focus on those things. And so that was my focus coming into the job. You know, leadership's a gift. I've said that a bunch. And it's, it's given by those who follow. So my comment would be that there were a whole lot of really good people who were willing to let me lead them. And so in my mind, it's always been about people. And I, I learned that from my dad. Um, and everywhere I went, I just saw these remarkable people and I thought, how can that not be the focus? So it, you know, it, I, I, I just think I was, I was given a gift early in life of being shown that. Um, and I think it served me well over time. I, I think that my career was more of a do the best you can today, and then amazingly, someone gives you another chance tomorrow. And then do that, and then someone says, you know, at some point in time they tell you that, you know, you've done all these different things, and I'm looking for somebody who's done different things, and they give you a really good deal, and you go, wow, I wasn't expecting that. And do that as well as you can. Uh, that, that's kind of the way many careers are, I think, in many different enterprises, but it certainly was the way mine was. And one of the things I love about the Academy is that I've always believed that corny things matter. They mattered in my house when I was growing up. They mattered to my dad, if they mattered to dad, they matter to me. But pride and patriotism and faith and family and respect and loyalty and friendship, all those things that bond people, that form teams, that, that allow you to go do really difficult things in difficult places at difficult times side by side, those things matter. And I learned about those things at the Academy. I'm the Dean of the Bush School of Government and Public Service at Texas A&M University. The mission of the school is to create principal leaders to go into public service and serve their fellow citizens. And it's a wonderful place to be. This university, Texas A&M, is a lot like the Air Force Academy. It's about corny things here. Uh, and at the Bush School, that's amplified by this group of young men and women who come in the door wanting to go serve others. It's, it's a tremendous environment. I've been privileged with the opportunity to, to, to serve in some of the groups that continue to support the Academy. I've been a member of the AOG forever, uh, and AOG is doing great stuff for Air Force Academy graduates and for the Academy. Uh, I'm a, a trustee of the Falcon Foundation, which is uh, the organization that actually gave me an opportunity professionally in life. Uh, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for the Falcon Foundation. Uh, and then I serve on the Academy Endowment Board because the endowment is about the future of the Academy. It's the people on that board are focused on, on making the academy a better place for future generations of cadets and ensuring success of future generations of graduates. And so how great can it be? I have no idea, but anything I can do to help it get there, I, I want to try and do. You know, academy graduates for my entire life have been my friends, my family, uh, my mentors, my role models, my trusted leaders my commanders, my flight leads, my instructors, my wingmen. For my entire adult life, they've been my inspiration. It was humbling to get that call. I've never seen myself as distinguished compared to any of the ones I knew. You know, one of the things that the Academy enabled for me was meeting my wife, because she was my Academy roommate's sister. Um, my whole life changed, not professionally, but my whole life changed when I met her. 
I have been blessed by having the greatest spouse on earth. Uh, she's been as much of my experience in the Air Force and now my connection to the Air Force Academy is as I have been. I wouldn't be sitting here without her either.